Welcome Modelers, Trekworks here with you with our finale in our video series here of our Round 2 Models Klingon Battle Cruiser buildup. And I want to say that I uh, had a lot of followers on this one and we're really happy with all the comments that we received along the way. I had a great discussion about uh, the paint scheme on this one. Now, um, you guys will, some of you guys will remember we talked about, uh, I went in and had and I uh, tried out a little pearl effect on the top of this thing. And uh, I really got to say that I fell in love with that. Uh, so I've decided to keep part of that here. I've gone ahead and uh, uh, kept my uh, my glossy area here just limited to this uh, this uh, top surface here on the rear hull. I've went in and done on the boom and the engine nacelles and everywhere else on the bottom uh, on the bridge section here, the forward area. Uh, the top of the, I've done that all in satin clear, like a more of a medium to dull clear, which really helped to tone it down some. Uh, the shine was so bright from the gloss that it, uh, from the glossy clear that it actually, and when one light would hit it a certain way, it would uh, just kind of glare so much that it uh, kind of obscured some of the shapes and things that have a hard time actually seeing what the model looked like. So, uh, again, appreciate those comments. Uh, we'd, we'd kind of match the, uh, the rear hull section here with this top area. And uh, what I wanted to say about that is that uh, this green and this gray that I came up with, I think, is pretty darn close to the uh, to the uh, shots that I have of this model of the uh, of the studio scale, the filming miniature. And when you get back uh, a foot or two away, you cannot see this. Uh, you cannot see the pearl. Uh, it's not. It's not. You know, super pronounced where it just jumps right out at you. You got. You got to get up pretty close to it to get uh, to start noticing it. So, uh, standing back from just uh, casual looking at it, 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 it looks like the uh, like the studio scale paint scheme um, now as you can see we've we've got it mounted to our um, kind of our Trekworks signature stand here um, now uh, uh, I've gone ahead and done these the way I usually do I've got uh, main power for the lights and I've got another switch here which powers up these two little green uh, uh, LEDs that I've mounted here which will act like spotlights and kind of illuminate the bottom of this thing Unfortunately, I can't fire these up for you. I can, I'm going to show you what the main hull lighting looks like, but uh, I didn't have the right resistor on hand for these, so uh, I've got to make a trip over to the electronic store, pick that up, and uh, and so I can get those fired. If I try to do it now, they probably would wind up burning up, so don't want to do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've gone and done uh, all of our detailing. We've got all our decals on. We did some work on these uh, grill things on the side here, and... Uh, our side pieces up here on the uh, on the bridge area and uh, we, we tried to replicate the, uh, the the paint scheme with the two-tone on the top and kind of follow that theme all the way through um, I want to point out that uh, uh, round two uh, all, although you know they did I do appreciate the work that they did uh, when they went in and kind of retooled this thing and got some got rid of some of these details that weren't on the uh, uh, the studio model they were actually on the uh, original drawings from Matt Jeffries but uh, uh, there's a kind of a story behind that uh, I talked about that in a little detail on the uh, on the review that I did of the uh, original 66 uh, 67 actually release of the of the Klingon cruiser where um, it's uh, the actual studio model the filming miniature uh, uh, did not have some of these extra details that were actually seen on the uh, earlier releases of this model kit and um, uh, that being said the uh, the fit of this model is and in certain areas it was kind of a pain to get the uh, to get the seams uh, taken care of uh, this section right in here this forward bulkhead area here where it meets up with the uh, with the top of the, the hull here it had uh, it, it required quite a bit of work I, I went in and puttied and sanded and puttied and sanded that thing probably three or four times before I got to the point where I was pleased with um, making that stuff go away. Uh, the neck section up here, same thing. It had a it had a little bit of deformity going on in this area in here that I had to work out. Uh, and then down here along the uh, engine booms, we had quite a large gap. Now I've built uh, several of these kits over the years, and all the way from the uh, some of the very early releases to some of the Ertl versions that were out in the mid '90s, and I don't remember those. Um, having quite the gap issues. There were always some issues to deal with, but this particular one seemed to have just a little bit more gap issues going on. And uh, uh, 
Again, I imagine those molds are starting to get pretty old by now. I'm not sure if this was a complete retool <coughs> or if they went back and <coughs> cleaned up um, uh, the actual, uh, you know, some of the original molds and they're still working with them. I have no idea, but this one here in particular it was a little bit more work. I don't want to say it killed my experience building it. It just added a little bit more time. Uh, I enjoy, as a modeler, I enjoy the entire building process, so it really didn't bother me yet too much. But just a heads up. You may have to do a little bit more work in the fit area. Uh, up here on the impulse deck, you can probably notice here there's just a little little bitty gap here uh, in between this top surface and, and this leading edge here. Uh, I've got this one worked in as best as I could get it. I actually, uh, in order to get the sides to fit fairly close and then uh, get the front to lay down as well as the back area, I uh, had to do some filing work there and I basically took it down pretty far. and. Uh, didn't want to go any farther than that because uh, I was going to start losing some of the detail on the edges and things like that. So uh, I've got it pretty much the best I can, but it just does not, uh, you know, this this part has been redesigned. It's all one piece now, and I I don't think it fits quite as well as it did on some of the original kits. You actually had this forward section here, and you had an insert that went in behind that on the uh, older kits. Uh, and again, some of the details uh, that they changed, those are uh, great, and they're, they're a lot closer to the... Uh, some of the detail work in the, the rear nacelle area here has been changed. It's, that's closer to the studio model. <clears throat> and then there, <clears throat> there are things that are still the same. Um, we've got our... Uh, fighting a little cold here, by the way. Uh, we've got our little... Uh, these little pieces here, these... I don't know if they're manifolds of some kind, or I don't know what the technical term for them. But on the actual studio model, you don't have this little downward uh, uh, sloping section here. It's just a straight piece of trim that goes across. So you could actually work that out yourself. You could trim that down a little bit and uh, and make those look closer if you wanted to. I didn't really bother with it. I think they look okay on there the way they are. And uh, uh, one of the other liberties I took uh, different than the actual studio models, I applied this this decal on top of the impulse deck here. It was included with the kit. Uh, it's not there on the studio model, but hey, it added a little something extra there on the top. And uh, it's kind of a nice looking decal, so I put that on there. And uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fire this puppy up here. Uh, we've got our our forward lighting here. Uh, I haven't finished the final step where I've gone in. And I, I've got to go in here at the end and add my uh, acrylic in these window ports, and that's gonna take down uh, some of the spots where you see if I flash across it here, where it appears like the the bulbs are kind of glaring through. Um, my original intention on this was to do it in fiber optic. I was able to uh, do my fiber optic here on the top, but the fiber optic that I needed to do these windows was uh, temporarily temporarily out of stock. So um, I kind of like when I get building my models, I like to keep going, so I didn't feel like waiting. And uh, <clears throat> I was able to, uh, again, use some of Model Man Tom's Modeler's Brand uh, double density LED lighting for this. And uh, I'm pretty pleased what I did with how I did this across this top section here. I got a little carried away with my lights on the bottom. I, I started out drilling um, uh, holes uh, that lined up with the decals that were there, and they just there weren't very many, and it just didn't look... Uh, to me, I envisioned kind of several decks that this area would have. It's a pretty large area here, uh, and uh, I may have done a little too many, and um, my option on that is, is uh, I can kind of evaluate that a little bit, and if I don't like it, uh, I can go back and I can easily putty these all in. And uh, I have again. I haven't done the acrylic on them yet. <clears throat> and they, uh, I want to point out too that in person they don't glare nearly as bad as they do on video. On video, LEDs tend to uh, they tend to glare at you a little bit. In person, they're very they're they're much more subtle, and uh, they are uh, they they look in scale with the model. Where we're here, they look a little kind of huge for uh, for the actual scale of the front end of this thing. But uh, again, I can go back and fill these in with putty. Uh, redrill some holes and uh, you know re refinish this thing with my airbrush fairly easily. So I'll, I'll kind of take a look at that and see what I think about that. But uh, uh, again, it's uh, it's got a nice effect. Uh, it it looks pretty much in scale. And uh, uh, again, in, in the series, the original series, uh, the CGI version, they uh, they depict uh, some lighting going on up here in the front. And they also depict some lighting in this area and here. But on the original um, uh, studio model, there are no there are no lighting areas on here as far as decaling. They only have some lighting in the forward section. Uh, 
so I kind of stuck with that. I thought about doing some lighting along the neck and things like that, but I just I just didn't really think it was necessary, um, and I didn't want to go too far off. But uh, so anyway, um, comparing this one here, I have a I have a Katinga here. That um, interesting. Some of the differences on this, uh, you can see they just have this single row windows here uh, in this area here, and then up on the top, uh, the upper decks, they've they've got quite a bit going on in there, and uh, you've got your uh, illuminated impulse deck there and uh, the illuminated nacelles which uh, you saw on the Kronos 1 ship from uh, Undiscovered Country and uh, that those were not illuminated or not meant to be illuminated on the uh, on the original D7 cruiser uh, one of the other differences is is that you have the forward torpedo launcher here on the uh, Katinga uh, but uh, on the uh, D7 uh, which actually was kind of disappointing I was watching one of the original uh, episodes that's been remastered where they've gone and done the CGI ships and uh, I believe it was the Enterprise incident I was watching where the Klingon D7 was actually represented as a Romulan ship and uh, uh, they were apparently using Klingon technology with their own cloaking devices and that in the battle scene that takes place towards the end uh, you see the actual Klingon D7 firing uh, torpedoes from the forward section here and on the original D7 this is a, a uh, it's supposed to be an antenna slash uh, deflector dish, and their their actual disruptor weapons were back here in the engine pods, and then uh, mounted here underneath of the, uh, uh, the the forward bridge area. So they kind of screwed that one up. And the actual, I actually thought the model work they did on the CGI version of the the new one was actually pretty cheesy, especially some of the the flybys they did. It it didn't even come close to the uh, to the uh, uh, when they did, when they redid the Balance of Terror, the, the Romulan Bird of Prey in that episode looked really good, a lot better than the uh, actual studio model did. So, I liked what they did with that. But anyway, that's just a whole different subject. Uh, again, uh, <clears throat> modeling, uh, it's it can be about it can be all about accuracy as far as getting down to the last detail. I enjoy that type of modeling as well, and I also enjoy just as much uh, uh, taking a little liberty with it and having a little fun with it. Uh, you know, you build lots of models, you can do the accurate, and you can do a little uh, of your own imagination on some of your builds as well. So, And uh, you're building it, so you build it your way. That's what the what the hobby's all about. Uh, it's fun. Uh, not everybody wants to build a model to uh, enter in shows and things like that. But uh, just to get have yourself a nice little display and kind of what fits in your, with your own uh, ideas of how you, uh, how you uh, vision things looking. So that's part of the fun of it. But again, we're pretty happy with this build. Uh, at the end here, uh, after this video, there'll be a little slideshow that, that, that goes into uh, some details of how we actually assemble this uh, kind of our Trekworks uh, signature display stand here that I've done a lot of my builds. A lot of you guys have asked about that, so I've, I've included some photos of uh, the step-by-step -step wiring and uh, uh, how we mount it on the stand here. And uh, again, maybe I'll do a little update down the line when I get my spotlights working. And uh, I may wind up toning some of these, removing some of these lights here and uh, going with that. But uh, just turn these off for a second so you can get a kind of a view of the bottom side here. Uh, hopefully that's not too blurred out. Um, but uh, overall we're you know, very happy with this thing. Uh, the extra work was mainly... Um, in that puttying those seams that I talked about and you just got to be patient with that and sand it down you don't want to use too rough of paper when you're trying to get rid of it it's tempting to use a really coarse grade paper so you can sand the stuff out of there faster but you wind up putting some pretty uh, pretty abrasive and deep scratches in your plastic that you're gonna have to do quite a bit of work uh, later to not see that in your paintwork so uh, yeah you want to be sure to just take your time and sand it down get it all nice and smooth and Put a little primer on there as you go and see how it's looking, if it's starting to smooth out good for you. Primer is actually a, a filler as well, too, so minor imperfections. A couple coats of primer and a couple uh, uh, passes of sandpaper in between there will really uh, clean up a lot of that stuff as well. But uh, Again, appreciate all the comments we had on this. Had a great discussion about... Uh, appreciated your input on the uh, paint scheme on this. We had kind of a 50-50 split as far as... Uh, going completely accurate and taking a little liberty with it and I uh, appreciate both uh, both viewpoints on that and uh, uh, we're getting ready to take a look at our next build here and uh, I think we're looking at the um, 
the 1 1000 scale Enterprise refit from Polar Lights. Uh, that's a nice little kit. Uh, it's It's got the Aztec decal package with it, and uh, that'd be a good opportunity to go in and uh, show some of the newer people uh, how to uh, apply some of those Aztec decals, some of the trials and tribulations of that. I've done several of them, and uh, I've actually got a, a video here you could look at on our channel here that, that goes over some of that on our Reliant model that we have up there and uh, uh, I, I basically did a uh, you know the model was already built and I went back when those Aztec decal, decals came out for the Reliant I basically wound up going in and sanding everything back off of that and because uh, and, I wanted to do it in that Aztec and I really really was happy with that so we'll see how those turn out on the 1 1000 on the on the uh, Aztec thing there's a that's actually where you'd want to go in and use some of this pearl um, when you do your base coat on the uh, on that kit, you'd want to. Uh, we'll go into that when we do the build up. You'd want to lay that stuff down in there. Uh, you want to lay your base coat down, and then you want to uh, apply your decals over top of that. And then you want to come in with a kind of a, a white silver pearlescent coat, and uh, then lay your clear to, over top of that, and you'll get that that kind of deep look that you're looking for, and that kind of shimmer, and it actually will help bring out those individual uh, panels in that. Uh, in that Aztec decal that'll make it look really really close to the uh, to the uh, filming model so uh, uh, I know over the years before these Aztec uh, decals were available it was quite a pain for people to replicate those uh, they were using many different techniques to try to get that and it's very difficult especially on smaller scale so uh, hopefully we'll get that one cooking here pretty soon again appreciate you all following along uh, thanks for all the new subscribers uh, meeting some really great people doing this, having a great time, and uh, uh, again, we'll hopefully we'll see you for our next build uh, coming here very shortly. And again, don't forget the slideshow at the end if you want to check out um, how we go about putting this little hobby box together here and getting this thing mounted on it. So uh, enjoy, and we'll catch you on the next one.